Hi, everybody. It's Laura Keller here with the We Know Lanark County podcast. And today I am joined with Bob Hahn and Joanne Henderson. Um, Bob is with the OPP in Carlton Place and Joanne works for the town of Carlton Place. And they are starting this incredible initiative called the Carlton Junction Outdoor Sports Pad. How are you doing, guys? Good. How are you? Good. Great. Thanks for having us on here. You bet. So... I mean, for me, as soon as I saw this, it was like an instant, why haven't we done this yet? (laughs) Because it's such a great idea. Um, Who, whose brainchild is this? Well, it kind of, we've had this idea for a while and it kind of backs up to almost about 10 years ago. Um, Myself and colleagues from the Carlton Place OPP detachment have been maintaining and uh, running an outdoor rink um, right by our police station. Yeah. So that rink has been the site of obviously lots of skating and ice hockey, uh, the, the Carlton Place um, Winter Festivals and other um, gatherings. Um, so basically, uh, over the last few years, we've talked about maybe turning that into a more permanent pad that we could maybe use all year round and for multiple different sports and venues. Yeah. So that's kind of... The, the backing behind this kind of initiative that that's, that's going on right now. So for people who haven't heard of this yet, like how do you describe it? What, what is it other than so, just another hockey rink? Yeah. <laughs> so a few years that. ago, uh, the town of Carlton place developed the Carlton junction uh, park and it's situated right on the old rail bed. And it's directly behind the uh, police and fire station uh, in Carlton place. Um, since they've done that park, it's host of skateboard park, um, a pump track, uh, outdoor uh, oven, play structure, and obviously the walking path and the ATV uh, snowmobile trail goes through there as well. Uh, and there's also a structure there uh, with facilities and uh, a storage room for and a covered porch area to have. For stage or have venues. Mm-hmm. Directly in front of that is a green space that's kind of unoccupied right now. Um, and what we're looking to do is build uh, an outdoor uh, permanent rink that'll house um, a nice pad in the winter time and in the off season. And in the summer, we could use it for a variety of sports such as basketball, ball hockey, lacrosse, pickleball, um, events like that or even maybe some social um, events as well. So how how big is it? Do you know what sort of size it's going to be? Uh, It's going to be uh, 60 by 120. Oh my gosh, it's going to be huge. (laughs) It's going to be basically the same size as the outdoor rink that was there for the winter. Yeah. Mm. Wow, that's great. So basketball nets are going up and pickleball, which I know a lot of people are super excited about. (laughs) Yeah, there's a variety of different activities we can host on that. Yeah, And we're looking at having um, four basketball uh, nets on the perimeter of the pad. Um, Also, we'll have sufficient lighting for the pad, so it's a safe spot for the community members to gather at any time of day, Um, keeping in mind, obviously, uh, noise bylaws and stuff like that. But it will be a safe spot. Um, And then eventually, we'd like to also see a small shack there, shelter, that will be able to uh, facilitate changing of um, skates or equipment and stuff like that. Right. And then it works convenient because we do have that structure uh, that houses our hoses and other equipment. Right. And maybe eventually um, a storage spot for running uh, future programs and stuff like that. Such a great idea because they're like, as the town is growing, we're sort of running out of places to go, especially for kids, but even, even teenagers and, and adults. It's such a great spot to be active, to be out, outdoors and um, really, especially in that spot, there's something for everybody, right? The, like you said, the pump track, the, the um, play structure, the pizza oven, which a lot of people don't, don't know exists either, but um, it, it's, it's such a cool, such a cool thing. So um, Joanne, you are in charge of gathering the sp- the sponsorships. So tell me a little bit about what you're looking for. Um, we have 
uh, different levels of sponsorship. We have a community sponsorship where um, the level goes up to $1,000. And with that sponsorship, uh, Maverick Donuts actually um, have offered to give a gift certificate um, for a free coffee and donut for every community sponsor. So that is a great little initiative and helps um, people wanting to donate. Amazing. And uh, then the next level is the bronze sponsorship, which is $1,000 to uh, $5,000. And um, the next level, of course, is silver, and it's $5,000 and up. And the final sponsorship is um, the gold, which is $20,000 and up. So with those sponsorship levels, there's a different, we always mention it on our Facebook page. We mm -hmm. take a picture of whoever's donated, or we provide a logo of the, the various uh, sponsors. Mm -hmm. And we put it on our Facebook page, uh, Carlton Place, or Carlton Junction um, community pad and those sponsorships are recognized through the Facebook page. Yeah. So if anybody's interested in, in donating, they can contact myself at uh, jhenderson at carltonplace.ca. That's perfect. And like, do you have an idea of how much this is going to cost at the end of the day or are you still kind of working on that? Yes, that number, we've, we've estimated it to be in the range of about two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. Right um, now, um, it's somewhat variable on some extra things that maybe we would like to add to the pad. Yeah. Um, but that's kind of my the base point that Joanne and I started at. Yeah. And um, I should back it up a little bit to to mention that um, whenever we formulated this idea, my colleagues and I, uh, I approached uh, the recreational. Um, planning committee and uh, presented this concept, this idea, and with that budget in mind. Um, and then the, the, the way this was able to get some traction initially and, and kind of take off in the community and have the support, support from the rec department and also the town of Carlton Place was the fact that uh, I went to the Carlton Place Canadian Tire store owner, Stuart, uh, yeah. on the onset of this uh, idea. And initially, right away, Stuart was on board 100%. He loved the idea. Uh, he loved the location and the concept of it. And he was able to um, offer a very, um, a, a very strong uh, commitment to the project financially. Um, and then he also was able to put me in connection with Jumpstart, which is an amazing organization, a charity group that uh, helps out communities on projects like this. So when I made my presentation to uh, to Joanne and the Rec Department Committee and also the Town of Carlton Place, having those two backing this project was um, a huge bonus for us on this kind of taking off from the ground. So with their commitment and then the rough numbers we have on what the project's going to cost, started our our fundraising goals and yeah are there any like government grants municipal provincial national that that you're able to tap into or are you really relying on private money we've been looking for grants but we haven't come across uh anything right now um we are our focus right now is on the community sponsorship and um as bob mentioned like the community has really jumped on board. And without that support, we wouldn't be able to keep keep the ball rolling. So yeah. <laughs> no, it's it's true. And and what what a great community it is because almost every other day I'm seeing a, a post on the Facebook page about another sponsor. And um, I think it really speaks to the fact that this is something that we we need. And um, like I said, with the with the population growing as much as it has, it's it's a perfect spot to have more space to, to run around and play and be active. Um, do you have a timeline about what's when, when this is going to be happening? Or I know everyone's sort of chopping at the bit, but what's... Yeah, that's definitely a question we get asked a lot. <laughs> and uh, I mean, we're very, we're anticipating by the end of the summer, this will be in place and, and getting real close for it to be kind of open to everybody. Yeah. Uh, there's a number of factors that fall into place. Um, one of it is just 
dealing with our vendors on getting the material, the boards, lighting, basketball nets. There's obviously a, a long leg there. Yeah. Um, currently, um, the project, if I was to give a status of it, um, we are at the phase where we're working with the engineers on just the scope of the modeling of what we're gonna what, what we're gonna need and the kind of the scope of, of the work that needs to get done. We've had um, some amazing support from, um, from some businesses um, in work in kind. So yeah. uh, GemTech is helping us with our geotechnical investigation for the, the soil and the digging. Uh, we had Cal and Deeds do some survey work for us as well in kind. Yeah. And also Macintosh Perrier is our engineering firm that's helping us design the, the scope of the, of the plan of the project. So we're kind of at that stage right now. So it is moving fast. Um, Joanne and I joke that we're basically drinking from a fire hose here. It's, it's coming quick and fast and it's, yeah. and it's great. The project's gotten a lot of traction and it's just, I think our, both of our goals when we started this was just to get the community involved and, and people kind of buying into the project. Yeah. Um, so that's definitely happened. And every day we're getting messages or inquiries. And the town of Carlin Place has been great as well. They've been able to uh, support this and allocate some, some funding towards it as well. Yeah. Have you ever done anything like this before, Bob? Or is this like your first kick at the can? No, I'm just kind of learning as I go, to be <laughs> honest with you. Yeah. I'm enjoying every minute of it. And, and really, uh, it's almost easy because Joanne's been such a big help. Yeah. Uh, keeping me on the on the tracks. And also we have uh, Jess Hansen from the town of Carlin Place. Uh, yeah. She's doing an awesome job with our social media posts. The yeah. three of us are really working in sync and, and things are just getting done and things are moving along quite smoothly. Yeah. If you're interested in making a move, talk to our team today about real estate in Carlton Place, Perth, Almont, or anywhere else in the Lanark County or Ottawa area. Visit laurakeller.ca for more information. It's it's a great team effort, obviously, and and um, with with the support of the community and other ideas that you're getting, I'm sure it just keeps snowballing too. That's right. Um, There's always new things we'd like to add. <laughs> I'm sure the list is growing all the time. <laughs> One um, thing that we're really excited to kind of look at as an extra per se is uh, a lot of these rinks that you'll see in communities we'll also have what is called a sport court on the uh, surface. Yeah. So not only do you have a concrete base, but on top of that, it will be um, a membrane or a material that is still safe to rollerblade on, play basketball, pickleball. In the wintertime, you can have your flooding on top of it or machinery. Yeah. And really the nice part about that is that it keeps it nice and clean and neat. It's a lot safer. It offers a fall protection. Yeah. So the users, uh, it's just a little bit safer and uh, it does cost a lot of extra. It's not exactly in our budget. However, we've had such amazing support in the community that we're really trying to reach that as our kind of next target goal um, to kind of work into the budget. Yeah. Well, it, it makes it a more level surface. You can put color in it. You know, mm -hmm. it can really, can really zhuzh it up a little bit and, and, uh, um, make it look really nice too. Um, do you do you anticipate having like a scheduling system for people to book certain times, or is this just going to be a, a free for all? How is it how is it going to work logistically when it's done, or do you know yet? Well, we haven't really sorted that out yet. Um, one of the um, things that we want to do is offer some after school programming um, through with the help of JumpStart. So yeah. just offering some programs for those individuals that maybe don't have the opportunity to participate in sports that are a little bit more structured. So um, we're hoping to do that um, type of programming. Um, we haven't really thought about whether you had to book it or anything like that. It's just kind of a, an open space right now. Right. And do you think you'll have community groups like clubs use it or is it more just for people who just show up? I think we could probably anticipate, uh, you know, maybe uh, after school programming there, but also maybe even a pickup ladies ball hockey or men's sure. ball hockey on a Tuesday night or, or yeah. you know, much like we see at our baseball diamonds or soccer fields where user groups might want to use it. 
Um, we haven't really kind of navigated that far yet. We're kind of just <laughs> at this point, but I think you're absolutely right is we're going to have a lot of interest in it. Yeah. And I think if COVID's taught us anything is just outdoor sports is great. Um, and like Joanne said, the less structure and just getting kids, uh, youth or community members out moving, doing activities is, is our goal. Yeah, for sure. I, I think like, yeah, I, I can't say it enough. I'm, I'm so excited to have, to have this as part of the community and it's, it's such a, a selling feature for the area as well. Like this doesn't really exist anywhere else. Have you sort of copied some other community that you've seen or is this just sort of all out of your, all out of your head? Oh, Joanne and I have taken this on the road a little bit and we've toured <laughs> around some outdoor rinks. I'll be honest with you. Um, so we have attended, uh, Smith Falls has a similar rink and uh, Town of Perth behind their fire department, they have a, a similar rink to yeah. similar size. Um, and that's helped us kind of navigate on figuring out what we want, what we like, what we think our community is going to need. Yeah. And so we have kind of uh, borrowed some ideas from different towns as well and, yeah. and learning from those people and what they did and what worked and what didn't. So hopefully we'll, we'll be able to bring the, just the ideal pod for our community. Yeah, I, it's, it's awesome. Um, what, um, other than the community sponsorships, is there anything else that people can do? Are you looking for volunteers at this point? Or is there, like, what, what's, the, what's the next step for the people who want to get involved? I think at, at this point in time, um, there's going to be a, a point in time where maybe we might need some more volunteers. And that's great. But I think at this point in time, we're just looking to, uh, you know, use podcasts like this um, to get the word out about this initiative, yeah. this project. Um, have people come and see Joanne or I, Joanne or I uh, email us or pop in and uh, just spreading the word. If people can commit any sort of uh, monetary donation, big yeah. or small, we're, we're willing to accept that. And it's going to really help our project. We have, um, obviously we spoke of the Facebook uh, page that we have. Yeah. I have an email address that maybe we can also share yes, and please post do. on your on your site and it's cpsportspad at outlook.com. Perfect. Uh, and that'll go directly to me and we can I can answer any questions, uh, whether it be a public donation or an inquiry or also a corporate sponsorship and, uh, and, and what we can offer as far as marketing, because there yeah. will be board space available for uh, corporations to have their logo and, and stuff like that. Or if people want to provide some input on kind of the direction that we're heading, uh, mm -hmm. we've had some suggestions from the community that have helped us. And it's been really great to get that feedback um, to help steer the ship a little bit. Right. So the, the boards are, they're kind of like hockey boards that are all the way around the yeah. pad is that the idea yeah and they're there year round yes okay cool so you don't have and to, the, you don't have to do the the ends we'll have uh, spring and, uh, and fall right putting up the boards and taking them down and <laughs> yes that's the biggest reason we want i wanted to start this project is taking the rink boards down and every year we're getting difficult but i just to add to that our rink boards will be permanent and they'll also be meshing on the ends as well oh cool uh, just to make sure that um, pucks and balls and, and stuff like that stay in this in the sport right. court area right um, and then I'll have access on each side as well with doors and, and okay. openings and it'll be um, accessible and do you have any like renderings or drawings of what it's gonna look like in your head yeah on our Facebook page we have a couple renderings there's yep. uh, a nice one behind <laughs> us as well and uh, <laughs> <laughs> we will uh, we will also share them with you if you're able to post sure. them on your site at all. Yeah. Um, give people an idea of the concept because yeah. uh, if you're not familiar with it, it might be hard to imagine exactly uh, what this um, end product is going to look like. Right, right. Um, what's been the the biggest surprise for each of you that you've as you've kind of gone through this project? What's been the biggest thing that has has shocked you in, in a good way or a bad way probably good but 
I think for me, it's the support from the community. Um, obviously, I knew there would be businesses that want to step up and people like yourself that show interest. Uh, but it's been overwhelming. It's been amazing. Uh, it goes to show, um, you know, I work in this community. I uh, raise my family in this community. And it makes me pretty proud to be a part of this community, seeing that support and the partnership uh, with everybody, whether it's a business, um, just the general public, yeah. and even the town of Carlton Place and our police service that polices this town. It's been a great partnership. What about you, Joanne? What's been the biggest I, surprise? I agree with Bob. I, so many times I, I say to Bob, like, I just can't actually believe this. I can't believe the support that the community has provided. It's, it's amazing. Absolutely amazing. What, like, what does that tell you? Like, it, it's, I, if, I feel like it's different, but I mean, I live here too. So I, I kind of, we all have a, bit, a little bit of pride, but what, what does that tell you about the people we live with? Well, they're great. It's a great community to live in. And um, the support that they're providing shows us that this is something that they want yeah. and they feel that's important for the community. So yeah, um, we just, we can't, the, we're overwhelmed actually. Yeah, I think just just the general vibe of of the Carlton Place area is it's really unique. Um, I've lived in a lot of different places. I grew up here, but I've lived in a lot of different places before I moved back. And um, the, it it really is a special a special place. And I know just being in real estate, when people are moving here from other other parts of either just Lanark County or Ottawa or even other parts of the country. Um, some people are a little hesitant because it's small town. It's not really close to, you know, the downtown core or anything in, in Ottawa, but, um, what, once they get here and they, they live here, it's, um, they, everybody really agrees that even though it's a growing community, it still has that small town vibe where, you know, your neighbors, you see people at the grocery store, um, you know, people care about each other, um, even just on different social media groups there's always support for anybody who needs it if you need a meal or some clothes or or a ride I think it's just one of those things that um that makes it so special and just and even having people like you you two who are spearheading this and and you have jobs like this, <laughs> this isn't like this isn't well Bob anyway this isn't your job to to do yeah. but, but you know, the, on that note it's I think it's a great opportunity for our community even to see myself and my colleagues uh, out contributing to yes. the rink over the last 10 years. Yes. Um, I can't tell you how many times where I've met a community member or a youth or a child out skating and just seeing a police officer outside of our police car and yes. outside of our detachment uh, in the community um, has a great impact, I think, on everybody. And uh, a lot of the times people just see us as police officers coming and going or uh, driving past. And it's nice to be able to connect with the community on a venue like this or walking by the rink and having it right close to our police station is a bonus. Um, it creates a great dynamic for everybody. And uh, that's, uh, you know, a great kind of attribute to the town that we live in is that you know, our police officers are right there contributing as well. And it makes you more accessible. It doesn't, it doesn't put you up on a pedestal or, or you're not, you're not like a scary <laughs> figure, you know, and, yeah. and you know, mo most of us grow up to, to trust people in uniform, but there are some people who, who have different experiences and to have, to have that sort of involvement one-on-one um, -on -one with people, not like you say, driving by or, or whatever, it's it's actual physical contact and talking to people and learning about their lives and helping a kid through a difficult situation. Like the, all of those things, I know you guys do. We, we don't hear about it all the time, but you know, maybe, maybe we'll have like a, a OPP community basketball tournament and we'll see who wins, I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we have hosted, uh, it, not the last couple of years because of COVID, but yeah. we have hosted um, on the outdoor rink uh, um, OPP skate days, what we call it, where we yeah. have a, a pizza party and 
officers are there to skate. We sometimes have a, a scrimmage or a hockey game as well with the youth, or we have the, the radar gun out there to see who has the hardest shot. And it's always been uh, a favorite by, uh, well, really, uh, I've seen some adults step up and try it as well. So it's not just the kids, <laughs> but it, uh, we have had venues like that. And I'm hopeful that we can grow on that and, and have it more often or, yeah. or other sports as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so you, we, you talked about the different sports that will be played there, but you also touched on potential events. What, what do you kind of have in mind for that space? Well, again, we don't really know, but um, <laughs> thing, just things like you could, you could have Oktoberfest, like you could have like a market where you have different vendors on the yeah. ice slab, or you could have, you know, like I said, Oktoberfest where you're having a liquor event, which will work well there because everything is, is um, fenced off and can be controlled. I like where so, your head's at, Joanne. <laughs> what's that? I like where your head's at. We can definitely do <laughs> Oktoberfest here. <laughs> So uh, just things like that. There's lots of opportunities with the, the pad and it can be used all year round. So that's, that's the bonus. Yeah. I think people get creative too when they, mm. when it's there and you can kind of visualize it a little bit better. There's going to be, I'm sure there's going to be a lot more stuff come up that, that will further contribute to, you know, the, the great stuff that we do, we do here in Carlton Place. Mm -hmm. um, is there, is there anything like, what's the next step for you guys? What's the, other than, you know, collecting the donations and the sponsorships, is there something that you're kind of waiting for or what, what's next? Um, like you mentioned, we're still collecting donations because we are still uh, looking to kind of get to the, the, the level that we need to be at to kind of help facilitate some of the extra, extra um, items that we want to get for the pod. Yeah. Um, so obviously donations uh, and community, um, involvement for that is a big yeah. thing. Um, working with our, the engineering team at Macintosh Perry on getting the, the plan, uh, finalized. Yeah. Uh, then once we have that, we're going to start looking at some vendors to do the work, uh, the pad, um, and kind of secure that. Yeah. Uh, then it's just waiting for material like concrete boards and, and yeah. items like that to kind of that, put it all like together. A, like a bid process or how are you, how, do you know how you're going to decide who to work with? Yeah, well, we'll have, we'll do a request for proposal for the various components, whether it's yeah. the concrete, the boards, the lights, everything will be kind of separated out and yeah. we'll, we'll invite people to provide quotes on them. Is that run through the town or is that just? Yeah. No, through the town. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's good. Kind of keep it above board and yeah. um, and all that good stuff. Well, we're getting close to our end time here. So since we're a, a Lanark County podcast, I want to ask each of you, I ask everybody at the end of every episode, sure. what's your favorite hidden gem in Lanark County? It could be a store, a restaurant, a trail. What's, what's mm -hmm. the best? What, what's your go-to? Oh, for me, it's definitely maybe a little bit biased, but it's definitely that park and the walking path. Um, my family and I, uh, we often use that path just for walks uh, along with the Beckwith walking trails. Yeah. We've also been up to the Lanark ones as well. So we enjoy doing the, the walking paths. And I think yeah. that we have some amazing paths uh, throughout the county. So for sure, that would be, uh, I don't know if it's a hidden gem or not, because there are they are occupied a lot and it's great to see. Yes, they are. They are occupied for sure. But there's a lot of people who are, who have moved here from other areas who don't, don't really know that these things exist. Like we're, we've been here for long enough that we kind of know, but um, yeah, there was, I interviewed one person and he said that there's like a fishing hole up in Lanark and he, he wouldn't tell me where it was, but. <laughs> no one ever gives up those locations. He, he wasn't going to, he wasn't going to share. But apparently there's a great fishing hole up in Lanark. <laughs> what about you, Joanne? Um, well, I will have to say something in Carlton Place, of course. <laughs> of course. Um, and one of the favorite spots that I uh, like to venture to is the Mississippi River Walk Trail, other than Carlton Junction, but. The trail that runs behind the arena along the water um, to Anthony Carroll Park is, yes, I see people using it every day and it's very popular. And if you don't go down, you won't know what you'll find down there. There's fishing down there too, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's one of those, like, unless you're, if you're driving by, you would miss the entrance, right? On That's right. Yeah. That, that street. 
you, yeah. you would never, you would never really know. I mean, there's a sign there, but if you're driving, you wouldn't see it. And, no. and most people think of a path as like, you know, just through a field or through the woods, but this really, it takes you down to the river and um, lots of wildlife and mm -hmm. all the, the plants and everything. It's such a great, a great little spot for sure. I yeah. love it there too. Um, well, thank you so much for joining me today on the podcast, guys. I'll make sure that um, that we share all of your contact information so that we can we can drive some more community sponsors to to um, come forward and and show their support. I know that's the that's the number one goal here, so that we can actually get this accomplished. And um, I'm honored to be a part of it myself. And I can't wait to uh, we, you know I should probably challenge everybody listening to. Uh, to send in some donations, you know, big or small, like you said, everything adds up. And I think the, the end result is going to be a really, a really positive thing for this, for this community, not just Carlton place, but, but the whole area, because it's, um, it's just such a special thing to, to offer, to offer everybody. So Absolutely. thank you for, for spearheading this. Um, yes. and, uh, I'm so excited for you. Thank you. And thank, thank you, you for having us on your podcast. It's awesome just to get the word out to the community yes. and uh, people may have heard our voices before because Joanne and I have actually been on the radio bingo doing the same thing. So <laughs> it's, it's been fun. It's been awesome. And just a reminder, the town will give a re receipt uh, for every donation. Maverick Donuts will also give a free donut to any donation over $20 and pop into the rink, see Joanne. She loves visitors. But maybe just don't wave down a police car for a donation. <laughs> but we're always willing to talk. So feel free to send us an email. Okay. Thank you so much, guys. It was it was truly a pleasure. And I cannot wait to see where this uh, where this goes. And thank you for Keller, Keller Real Estate team for the donation as well. It was very generous. And it helped yeah. jumpstart it because it was one of the first corporate sponsors as well. So thank you very and much. We are, we are so excited here. We can't wait to have our own little... Uh, own little pickup games ourselves to to break up our work day so <laughs> okay we will talk to you soon and thank you everybody for tuning into the we don't get Lanark county podcast stay tuned for the next episode bye bye bye